first step of a pretty, uh, pretty uh, nice milestone, 400 goals. Just when you hear that, what goes through your mind? Uh, well, I've been around for a little while, but uh, I've obviously played some uh, with some really good teams, some really good players. Um, you know, been on, been fortunate enough to, uh, uh, like I said, play with those players, play with those teams, and and uh, be rewarded for it. Uh, I'd like to think a lot of hard work has gone into it as well, from uh, from my standpoint, and uh, um, just trying to have consistency over my career. So, um, not trying to think about it a whole lot. Just stick to uh, you know what you do every day and how you go about your preparation and how you need to play. So. Um, you know, just keep being strong around the net, shooting the puck, and, and hopefully it uh, comes in a good way. The Sedins are going into the hall this weekend. Um, when you think about them, is there a game, a moment, anything specific that comes to mind? Uh, I think it was just their style of play. Uh, I'm playing against them, you know, and the way they could cycle the puck. Um, you know, not being the biggest guys, but how strong they were on the puck. And, and people always would joke, or guys would joke around the league just about how they always knew what each other was thinking, uh, just that connection, obviously, being twins. So, um, but their ability to uh, make plays in, in tight spaces, um, you know, and just, you know, how they knew where each other were and their ability to, to uh, create space off the cycle, I thought was exceptional. Um, so, obviously, uh, uh, great players and, and uh, well deserving uh, recognition. I think you would have played with the uh, Long International on a couple yes. of occasions. Um, what was he like around the room? Because it seems like he's got he's a way funnier guy than people do. Yes, I, I think that's a great way uh, to uh, describe him. He was a, he was a blast to be around. Uh, brought a great energy, but also uh, I think a, a tremendous uh, work ethic. Uh, when I was around him and saw, and I think. Uh, why he was so highly regarded there in Vancouver, especially in the leadership side of things. Um, so, yeah, obviously another guy, tremendous career, had some good battles with him, uh, myself, playing against him, and, and uh, but definitely, uh, um, you know, an elite goalie that uh, uh, was was a ton of fun to be around in the locker room. He uh, he really liked uh, keeping things light and loose. Did you have much success against him? I believe he was the goalie uh, I scored the OT winner against uh, to beat Florida in the playoffs to knock, to knock Florida out. I believe it was Lou. Sometimes you want to so that's that. I, I would I would take that <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so, but uh, he's had my number at times. I'm sure too. And you guys have the Islanders connection. Yes, yes, we do. Sometimes you want to block out the crowd. Next couple of nights, there's going to be some some big names out there. What's that going to be like? Do you think for the team to be uh, to have those Hall of Famers in the audience? Yeah, it's always uh, really cool to be a part of it and, and take that in. I mean, uh, that's what's special about our game. Uh, so many people on and off the ice, how uh, continue to make it great and build it um, and do everything that they do. And, and we get to follow in those footsteps. And, and uh, you know, for me, it's really cool uh, now uh, to see, uh, especially on the player side of things, that uh, uh, guys that I played against or played with and, and see them get those recognitions and, and uh, experience, you know, be part of the experience of why they were great players and, and what makes them Hall of Famers. He's well before your time, but uh, what does uh, Borea Salmi mean to you? Well, obviously, he's a big part of the tradition and the history here. Um, and, you know, he, he, you know, still loves being a Maple Leaf and, and uh, his connection with the team. And uh, we know he's in, 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 a, in a big fight right now, so all our support and thoughts are with him. And, and uh, uh, I know the Swedes, how much they, they talk about him, how much they love him. So, um, yeah, he's obviously a, a major part of uh, uh, the organization here, and I think even just uh, loves being a Torontonian himself too. So um, yeah, it's uh, uh, obviously a person that uh, um, that uh, has done uh, a significant uh, or made significant contributions uh, to the team and organization. And even as players today, you you feel those and, and recognize that. John, what comes to mind for you when you look over and see that Sid and Malkin are still doing the things that they did there? Yeah, it's not surprising, and it's uh, as it was, you know, for me entering the league and over the course of my career playing against them a lot. Um, just incredible uh, drive and uh, determination to be successful. Um, obviously, tremendous skill sets, but uh, they've uh, they've obviously been through a lot and, and continue to push the envelope to to be an elite team and, and uh, uh, you know a tough te tough test to play against every night. So um, we know we got our work cut out cut out against them, and, and we have to be at our best uh, to make it difficult. Do you see any similarities between Austin and Sid? Um, yeah, I do. I think, you know, they're, I've, I've always um, thought about both of them, probably the two players that I, I've really seen guys that control the game 
Uh, the game always seems to kind of go through them, whether that's the puck kind of following them around or just always things always seem to happen really well on the ice when, the, when they're on it because they just they, the, the game just seems to go through them. Um, so obviously playing with, with Poppy uh, a lot and then playing against uh, Sid a lot and, and my experiences internationally with Sid. So um, those, those, that's for me is kind of the comparison uh, I, would, uh, I would say between the two that I've seen. Are you too young to have ever seen Solomon play? Yeah, I would. I, yeah, too young. Mostly just highlights. You mentioned the Sedin's always kind of knew where each other was. You know, obviously Nylander's like a twin. Yeah. But you played him for a while. <laughs> Do you have a sense of where what he's doing? Like no, we're definitely not twins. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, more and more you play with someone, just the more comfort level and understanding you have um, on and off the ice. And I and I think there's continued uh, growth from both of us in our own way that I think, you know, can hopefully, I think is really benefiting us and how we continue to be better and push each other, uh, be different ma difference makers uh, uh, in all areas of the game with and without the puck. So, um, you know, he's obviously a tremendous talent and a very, very driven uh, hockey player in person. So he's, he's a blast to play with and, and it's been great. Uh, I think our evolution, I think individually, but uh, as, as, a, as a combo and hopefully uh, we can, we continue that way. I know that, uh, uh, we really enjoy playing together, so um, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's been great so far. So um, you know, hopefully, more and more and more becomes like something something on the city level. Uh, this is a bit before your time, obviously. But what does Boris Solomon mean to you? Well, I mean, he's uh, he's an icon. I mean, he, back in Sweden, here in Toronto, um, you know, I got the chance to meet him a couple times and talk to him. So um, you know, he's just an icon and a guy uh, you know just look up to. Think about what he's going through and the reaction Sweden and having that sort of thing. Yeah, obviously it's tough. I mean, he's going through a really big fight right now, and uh, you know we're all standing behind him, and we, uh, you know, it's tough, but uh, we uh, everyone supports him, and it's uh, it's great to have him in Toronto right now. And um, as I said, we all support him, and we uh, we hope for the best. Have you been able to reach out to him, talk to him at all recently? No, I haven't talked to him recently. I talked to him last time, I think this summer. Uh, it was the last time I spoke to him, and um, yeah, that's about it. What's the most memorable thing he said to you? Advice or anything else? Um, I mean, he's, he's just a great guy overall, so I don't know if he really gave me any advice. He just said, look out for Toronto media. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but he, uh, he, when I got drafted, he, uh, he took me for lunch, actually. Um, you know, somehow we, we got in touch, and he, he wanted to go for lunch with me, and uh, that's something I'll remember forever, for sure. And uh, as I said, he's just an icon, so uh, that's, uh, that's my first memory. And... Um, you know, something uh, something I can always look back at. Where was that, Rasmus? Back in Stockholm, uh, I think back in 2018. So, yeah, I remember that. Were you nervous in that? Too? Oh, yeah, I was nervous. So, yeah, um, you know, with his voice and everything when he talks. And, you know, he's, um, it, it, was, um, it was special for sure. You know, my dad, well, he was with us too. And uh, he was my dad or my dad's idol growing up. So he was probably more nervous than I was. But uh, I remember that lots and uh, it was a great time for sure. What's that? <laughs> no, I think um, I think it was on the house when Boria was with us, so <laughs> <laughs> it should be at least, yeah. Probably doesn't have to pay for any meals this week. No, probably nowhere in the world, I'd say, but uh, no, it was great at least. It's a big day for, it's a big weekend for Swedish hockey with uh, three more going into the Hall of Fame. Your thoughts on the Sedins and Alfie? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you know, Sedin brothers, they, uh, they're from where I lived a bunch of years back in Sweden in Nordfjordsvik, so, you know, I've seen them in the gym quite a bit, and um, yeah, I mean, uh, just overall with Alfie, uh, those two, and it's just great for, for Swedish hockey, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just great. Who is better? Who is <laughs> Well, you, I guess I have to say both are as good, or they're equal. How do you tell them apart? Uh, I can't. I mean, it's numbers, but now they don't play anymore, so it's tough. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, it, it's, <laughs> that's very tough, actually. Do you have any members of Daniel Albertson play, or was he maybe just a little bit before? Not much. Uh, I just remember he he went to Detroit at the, his last season, right? And that's uh, that's pretty much what I remember. Um, you know, I think he was a little bit before my time. And in Sweden, it's tough to you know be up at night watching the NHL hockey. You just see it in, on the news in the morning or whatever. But uh, obviously, I I know him, know who he is, and I've I've seen the highlights of him. So as I said, it's just great for for Swedish hockey overall. You know, Alfie was hated here. No, I did not. I did not. Big rivalry. Oh, I, I know that, but I didn't know he was hated here.
For us, Ms. Lowe, how's the adjustment on the right? Like, and, and was that first of all the biggest part? Is that an example of some of the plays that are, are tricky for you? Yeah, I mean, that's a place that happens. I think they can happen on, on your strong side or your weak side. Um, you know, it's an un unlucky play and uh, a tough start of the game for a shift. So, um, but it happens. You just got to move on from them and, and, uh, and, you know, try to not make it happen again. So, um, but the adjustment has been fine. I mean, I, I've been playing with Gio and he's helping me a lot. So, uh, we're kind of playing the side we're, we're getting on to. Um, so, if he stays on the right for a little bit, I mean, we're trying to shift whenever it's a good chance. But I think the adjustment's been pretty good. So you've been working with the skill development guys before, Paul. Like, is it is that help you with that? Like, the, the adjustment is the skating a big big part of it? Yeah, yeah, lots. I mean, it's the way you turn. Um, you know, playing with your stick on the inside, it's easy to get your back turned on the right side of the wall and stuff like that. And it kind of takes takes our players away a little bit with your with, when you with how you have your head up. Um, so trying to work on that, and uh, obviously it helps a lot. So um, trying to get some, as many sessions as I can in there. What's it like to face Crosby? Well, that's uh, it's tough, um, but he's uh, obviously he's uh, he's has been such a good player for such a long time, and <clears throat> that's one of the guys I look up to uh, growing up. So, obviously, he's had a tremendous career so far. But uh, hopefully, uh, we uh, we have some plans to to stop him tonight, and hopefully, he uh, he won't be as good as he usually is today. What's down low, down low, does anybody have edges like him? What's that, sir? Down low, does anybody have edges like Rob? I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, it's tough. Um, trying to not look too much on his skates because then I'm probably going to be laying on the ice. So, um, you know, just try to follow and play smart against him because obviously everyone in this league and probably everyone in this world knows how good he is. So uh, I just got to play smart against him and, and uh, yeah, play tight on him. Don't give him any room and uh, don't give him time to make uh, make lots of plays. What stands out most to you about the way Harris handled being kind of thrown into the fire here in the starter's role? He's been doing it really well. Um, I mean, Eric is uh, he's kind of a quiet guy, but he's confident in himself, and he, he knows what he's doing, and he's, uh, he's super happy to be up here and get the chance to play, and obviously everyone here is so happy for him as well. And, um, you know, he's been handling it really well. I think Vegas game, he, he played really, really good for us. I mean, I don't know how many breakaways he stopped and uh, really good scoring opportunities. So we're happy for him, and hopefully he can keep that going. Does he ever break his calm demeanor because he's like, Maybe in Swedish, I don't know, like playing cards or something. Yeah, we don't play too much cards, but uh, uh, yeah, he can he can be pretty mad sometimes. But uh, you know, as I said, he, he's a calm guy. He's just super nice, and he's he's confident in himself. So um, obviously, looking forward for tonight, and uh, so does he. Zach, uh, what's tonight going to be like for you? Um, not really sure what to expect. It's always a little awkward playing against guys that you've been friends with for five, six years, but. Um, I mean, everyone says that that plays against their old team and have friends during the game, so. Catch up with any of the guys uh, yesterday? Yeah, um, stopped at the hotel and just said hi to a few of the guys, short and sweet. Who were you close to on that team still? Um, I mean, I'd say probably 70% of the team. That's been intact since I was there. Um, I built a pretty close relationship with a lot of those guys. And I don't know, just sitting a few blue here, doing one in rest, blue beetle, I mean, guys like that, so. You're out there against uh, Crosby tonight. You got some inside information that will help you. I'm sure you battled in practice. Um, no, I mean, I can't really prepare for that. He's one of the best at protecting the puck, and um, plus some of the best vision in the game. And um, it'll be a task. I'm not sure what line's going to get that matchup, but whoever does, I mean, it's going to be a hard task. You've only been here a little bit, but do you notice any similarities between Austin and Sydney, either game-wise or how they approach it? Um, I think they have a similar work ethic. They both work really hard in practice. Um, I mean, even, I'd say, more so I noticed some similarities between Tavares. Just, um, I don't know, it's almost like a little bit of an aura that those guys give off that, um, you know, you just want to follow. Like they're meticulous in terms of their approaches because we hear yeah. stories about John. Yeah, definitely so. Just wondering uh, what it's going to be like to face off against Crosby and Austin tonight. Yeah, it's uh, obviously, uh, you know, Crosby was uh, my uh, idol growing up, but no, it's going to be uh, pretty excited for that. But again, it's another game uh, we've got to be focused on and playing, and uh, it doesn't matter who the opposition is. Crosby was your guy growing up? Yeah, he was my guy. He was my guy for sure. Why? Because you're Well, my, my, uh, my agent was his agent, and I was playing around when he entered the league and stuff, so um, I was always asking my agent about him and stuff like that. But, uh, 
Yeah, he's, he's my guy going on. You meet him? I've never met him before. Never met him before. Is it going to be weird to look across today and see him? <laughs> yeah, a little. I mean, um, I've played against a lot of players now. I've been kind of like, oh my god, and now it's like, you know, you kind of I have to more things to worry about. So. Did you have a sweater, a poster, anything, anything like that? Any, every, any, everything you can imagine. I was a big Pittsburgh fan, a big uh, uh, Crosby fan. Uh, Still have it? Any of it? No. <laughs> oh, it's gone. <laughs> Not in the box. Uh, it, it's it's maybe put away. I didn't toss it out, but no, it's still. So when you're talking to your agent about Sid, like, did anything pop like that you learned about him that you maybe incorporated or? Well, just he saw when I was young, it was just his work ethic, and uh, actually, you know, him. I remember uh, him calling to the puck a lot, so I incorporated that in my game. And uh, when I was younger, and people used to say I called the puck too much, so um, I think that's one of the big things. Uh, Watching him and, um, and learning from Asia. Would you try to get a stick? Are you that, that guy that would ask for a stick? Uh, I don't know. It'd be nice if I got one. But uh, again, I have, a, I have a game to focus on tonight. I have, um, you know, I'm not <laughs> an eight-year-old Sid fan anymore. So uh, I have a big game today to focus on. How do you feel it's been going for you since you've been back with John and Philly? It's been good. I mean, obviously, the we would like a little more offense, um, given the past two games we played against a lot of, you know, in Carolina and then Vegas. So tough teams and. Uh, you know, it's not going to get easier, obviously, but uh, I think with more games, with them, more games under my building in the NHL, I can find ways to produce. What stands out to you the most about John Tavares, be it on the ice or off the ice, because, you know, Zach was just telling us he's meticulous with what he does to prepare. Yeah, he's very, he's very, you know, has his routine. Uh, I think that's one thing I see for him is, um, you know, he knows what to do with his body, he knows how to prepare for games, and, and, uh, and on the ice, you know, he is um, a great player, obviously. He's one of our best players, one of the top players in the league. And uh, I mean, I'm just fortunate to play with him. Blocking shots was not the thing to do, right? Oh yeah, like, again, it's it's a bit before me, but I uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've, uh, speaking to to my dad and his generation about him, uh, uh, they they always say underrated, one of the one of the best players, you know, in the game at his position. So um, uh, yeah, great. Uh, Great to, to gain knowledge about guys like that all the time and, and have uh, weeks like this. Who's your dad's name? Paul. Paul. Yeah. Who's your? Well, when I was growing up, it was sort of the ninety, uh, early nineties. So uh, you know, Doug Gilmore was was a was a big one. Wendell Clark uh, were two that stand out really really off the top of uh, my mind. Um, and then going on the back end, I, re I remember watching them in '93. They they had a, you know, guys like uh, McCowan, Bob Rowe, Sylvan Lefebvre, uh Todd Gill. So all those guys I really watched really closely on the back end. Um, I remember Pat Burns running. I think he was running like 5D at one point throughout that playoff. So yeah, I, I was a huge fan growing up, and that that was my era. I mean, uh, we all remember. In game seven against LA and uh, how devastating that was but uh, uh, you know as I got older it became guys like uh, Sundin and, and uh, McGillney and guys like that so it was, it was cool 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 uh, to grow up uh, here obviously watching the team and now be be a part of the organization. Mark what do you think the moment will be like when they recognize for you? Oh, I think it's going to be unbelievable. I was just saying I uh, I uh, saw a tweet, I think it was, or a picture of his family all together. So um, I think uh, that's, that's a special moment, obviously, for them. And uh, I think you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna see a great you know a great moment there for sure. From your time in the Pacific Division, do you have a Sedin's moment or game that really, really stuck out? I have a lot. I mean, not not great uh, memories of them. Uh, they were they were extremely hard to play against. They were they read each other so well and uh, used each other so well out there in all uh, all uh, aspects of the game. The one I, I remember the one I think I still honestly I still can't tell them apart after all these years, but. Uh, I don't know. One of them was going for the uh, the title, the scoring title, or the league lead, and um, we were. It was it was the last game of the season. It was just a, a great play off a face off. One of them went in, in between the legs, passed to the other one to, to sort of get it. So that was a pretty cool moment, not to be a part of on the bad side of it. But looking back now, yeah, I mean they made so many great plays like that over the years, and. Uh, 
playing against them and being in their division, unfortunately, I got to see a lot of those. Who's leading the charge here? I don't mean to lead off, sorry, but uh, generic to your dollar question. What's he brought? And then when you hit a, a rough patch, a guy like that who's kind of seen it all and has lots of experience, is there anything specific that he helps you with? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is just his demeanor. He's, he's a very calm, even keel guy, and a lot of that comes just as natural personality, but also because he's sort of been through it all and, and seen it all. So, yeah, I think at times whether it's going really well and you need to, you know, keep it going well and, and keep guys um, keep guys rolling, uh, he's got a great perspective there. And then, you know, he, he doesn't say a lot, uh, but we're actually trying to encourage him to, to say a little more because he does have a lot of uh, great things to say and offer. But, you know, um, it's been it's been real nice. I mean, really nice for lots of reasons, but obviously you know, take Muzzin out of our lineup here right now and, and losing his voice and his perspective, um, it's that much more important for us to have someone like Gio. So, you know, the leadership part of it has been excellent. The stability he brings on the ice as well and the consistency as well, all those things are very important for our team and specifically our defense. There's a lot of stress on you in this market, of course, but a night like this is it kind of rewarding to see, you know, to be where you are and see all the Hall of Famers who are going to be up there tonight. Yeah, it's a, it's a great night. Uh, it's one of, I mean, for as long as I can remember, this is always a game that I was, you know, be excited about watching on TV and the whole the whole weekend and, and honoring players that you you idolize and all of that. Of course, as I'm getting older, it's now players that, you know, you know I. The Sedins, for instance, uh, remember them getting drafted. That was my my draft. So um, all that kind of come in full circle. But it's a it's a terrific night, and we're very fortunate to be able to host it here in Toronto, and, and you know, and give uh, our fans uh, an opportunity to acknowledge them. What's uh, Gloria Salami mean to you? Well, it it has a whole new meaning when you become the coach of the Leafs because you know he's. Uh, you know, like so many others, he, he is the guy that you, you when you think of the Leafs, you, you think of him. In particular, when it comes to the European players, which are, you know, so prominent around the league, but even on our team now, I know we have a number of uh, Swedish players specifically that um, have a, a bond with him, and he's even taken time to, to you know, spend time with them. Um, uh, you know, he was here last season and chatted with him briefly. Um, but uh, I think he's, it's very clear to me that he's a proud Maple Leaf. And I think, like all of our alumni, when you have that connection, I think it helps your current team. You see how the impact that the team has had and the city has had on, on players that have come before them. And obviously, um, I was young through a lot of his career um, and a lot of it before I was even born, but it, you still feel his impact even more so now in my current role. Nick Robertson was talking about idolizing Sidney Crosby growing up, but has to put that aside, has a job to do. Just curious, did, in your playing days, did you have a moment like that where you're looking across at an idol and it's hard to, you know, stop admiring them and, and go to battle? I was a huge Mario Lemieux fan, uh, so it was playing against him was was different, and we had we had a couple of uh, couple little battles that he certainly wouldn't remember, but I I uh, I remember very well. But um, yeah, there's there's some moments like that. Uh, it's part of growing up and part of you know your sort of your welcome to the league. That's kind of I think the biggest thing to get through. I can remember my very first preseason game in the NHL was in Tampa, and um, we were playing Carolina. Uh, Way I remember it, and on the other side, you spend most of the warm up just looking down the other end. You know, uh, the guys that you're in camp and, with, and stuff with, they become, you know, you become familiar with them. But when you see the other, the other guys on the other side, it's a little bit different. That's part of the growth of the league. I think you get over that fairly quickly, and you realize that you belong. I think that's the biggest thing. What's happened in those battles with you? Mm, that's for another day. <laughs> What's the Dean draft is one of the sort of remarkable draft 
days in NHL history. And for you, it also had to be a, a bit of a, a, I don't know, a challenge to the right day, because you weren't sure where you were going. Would, take us back to that, that, day, that time and what you remember. Well, I remember the whole the buzz in the building with the trade and, and things happening there, and, and I can't remember specifically how it was, but Tampa was also involved in a trade um, around that time, and um, that, the trade that, that, that happened ended up, the way it sorted out, I ended up being Tampa's first pick because they, they, they didn't have their first pick that year. But um, well, a lot of buzz in the building there. The draft is a... You know, for, for some people, it's at the top of the draft. It can be quite predictable, but, but in, a, in a lot of cases, in most cases, it's very unpredictable. A lot of uh, stress with it, but it's amazing. And now as you've gotten older and you've gone through the playing days and now being on the coaching side of it, you when you're in that moment in the draft, it's like that's the biggest day of your life, right? And then... As you get older and then you start to reflect on it, you realize in a lot of ways the draft is fairly insignificant, you know, because it's, it's, uh, it's just one step in the process for most players. And if you f focus on that, then it, um, it can kind of get away on you. It's what you do after that that makes the biggest difference and impact on your life. Um, but in that moment, it's special. It's great. There's so much that's that goes into it for every player, from family sacrifice and um, time and effort and sweat and tears and all those kind of things. But it's one uh, one thing on a on a journey to being an NHL player that uh, you know, as you move past it, it becomes fairly insignificant. Yeah, so look now for uh, Matt Murray after a couple of good days of practice. Yeah. Uh, well, the the outlook first of all is that he's progressed well. He's done well. You know, um, no no decision, no final decisions have been made um, in terms of how we'll handle tomorrow. He's I think he's still out on the ice there right now, but um, we'll get through today and make the determination from there.